right through the year, this veggie patch provides our family with homegrown food. But to keep it productive, seasonal planning is key. For some home gardeners, spring is the time that they think about planting veggies. But there's loads you can plant over the cooler months as well. Here in Perth, the summer is just so hot and dry. But come autumn and winter, there's rainfall, the conditions are milder, so there's less stress on plantings. Now that summer's over, I've removed the leftovers of last season's crops, except for these climbing beans, which are still cropping, plus I'm saving some for seed to plant next spring. But that still leaves me four beds to replant. I've been building this soil up for a number of years now, and it's looking really good, especially considering I started on pure sand. But before I replant, I always put some extra love into my veggie beds, and that is the key to successful crops. To start with, I'm moving the drip lines out of the way for convenience before applying a range of organic soil conditioners. First up, bentonite clay. This improves nutrient and water holding capacity in sandy soil. Adding small amounts of clay over time is better than overdoing it up front. Next up, it's pelletised poultry manure, which acts as a general fertiliser and will feed the plants for several months. And then the good stuff, compost. This is what really improves soil. It adds structure, provides nutrients, and of course, encourages soil microbial activity, which leads to healthier plants. Lastly, I'm gently forking over the bed to blend all the ingredients together. With the soil preparation done and the drip line back in place, I'm just about ready to plant. But it's worth doing a bit of planning before you launch into putting plants in the ground. In particular, think about crop rotation, which essentially means making sure you don't plant the same crop in the same spot season after season, so you reduce the chance of pest and disease attack. Also, if you rotate your crops, you can get more out of your soil. This season, I'm planting leafy greens in beds where I've previously grown legumes because they love the nitrogen that legumes fix in the soil. Next season, I'll plant fruiting crops here, like tomatoes, eggplants and cucumbers, which are still heavy feeders, but don't need as much nitrogen. I've also chosen crops that my family like to eat so that we make the most of the produce. With my long-term winter leafy greens in the ground, I'm now going to fill in the spaces in between with a process known as intercropping. Now, in time, these plants will fill out the whole space, but whilst they're growing, I'm going to make the most of that room by planting pak choy in here and lettuce in the other bed. But here's another tip. I'll plant seedlings down one row and I'll be harvesting within weeks. In the other row, I'll plant seed to keep the produce flowing over time. In the last two beds, I'm going to plant root crops, which are coming off the back of fruiting crops that I had in these beds over summer. Now, root crops have the lowest nitrogen needs, which is why they come at the end of the list. Once they're done, I'll plant legumes in these beds and the whole cycle starts again. In here goes the beetroots and carrots. And I've reserved the next bed for the onion tribe. Leeks, red onion and garlic. These fantastic winter veg will see us through until spring. Well, there you go. With a little bit of planning and a good day in the garden, you can turn your spent summer patch into a productive winter wonderland.